All right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss Liz Truss's prospects of surviving as Prime Minister. I actually think the lettuce is going to outlive her. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So let's try and keep up with events, shall we? On Thursday, there were hints that uh, more tax cuts were going to be dropped. The market responded positively to this. On Friday, Truss sacked Quarteng and then conducted a press conference where she basically binned quite a lot of the mini budget, but the markets didn't breathe the intended sigh of relief. In fact, they got spooked all over again. And, and this is because what Truss has actually done is still say, I want uncosted tax cuts. That's basically what she's saying. She's not explicitly saying that, but by her actions, that's sort of what she's hinting at. So instead of just making the budget work, she's, she's, she's chucked it in the bin without really saying what's to come next. Anyone paying attention can see that Truss is finished, so I can only assume that Truss is not herself paying attention. Now, there is serious speculation that she'll be getting the tap on the shoulder very soon, like in a matter of days, not so much weeks or months. She might not even last the weekend, although I'm not sure how she can be ousted today or tomorrow, so I, I think that's probably not likely. What would surely force her out is a load of letters. I mean, a load of letters of no confidence being submit, submitted to Sir Graham Brady, chair of the 1922 Committee of Backbench Tory MPs, which celebrated its centenary last week, I believe. I wonder if there was cake. And as I don't think Brady lives in his office, surely it can only be determined that enough letters have been submitted on a weekday. So, in fact, I think Brady's out of the country, in fact. I think the 1922 committee are having a remote meeting this weekend, but they insist it's not about changing leadership challenge rules. It's about uh, seeing how they can support Liz Truss. Hmm. But bear in mind, current party rules do mean that Truss can't face a confidence vote in her first 12 months in the role. So, if the letters just amounts to the usual 15% of Tory MPs, that's not really going to work. It would have to be a lot more. But it could be a lot more, you know. And if it is a lot more, those rules can easily be changed. No problem. And, and the change they may need to be. I, I talked earlier on about the fact that it may well be that the markets are not going to settle down until trust is gone. You know, they, the markets haven't settled. On Monday, MPs may conclude that only replacing trust and only doing it urgently will do the trick. So then they need a plan to do that because it's not straightforward. Even if they can persuade her to step down, it's not straightforward replacing her. You know, her press conference went down like a lead balloon. I don't know how many times I have to try and explain to the Tories, letting trust speak to the public will always make things worse. Maybe the penny will drop soon. Maybe it already has. But if they do remove her fairly soon, not only will she be the shortest serving UK Prime Minister ever, she will have actually spent longer as a leadership candidate than she did as Prime Minister. That's not something you want to see on your Wikipedia page, is it? In terms of credible plans, there might be one. But let's go through options in not necessarily a particular order, but maybe a reverse order of usefulness. So the first option, the most straightforward. So let's say there's an avalanche of letters with a sequence of events that means another leadership contest that's similar to the last one. That would be completely insane. That would be completely insane. First of all, the public would just look at them and what are you doing? Um, another two months of government paralysis during this massive crisis we've got. No. They'd risk getting Boris Johnson back. I do actually wonder in all seriousness if he now wants to come back. Now that he's seen just how easy it is to make money on the American speech circuit as a former prime minister with a posh English accent who's got a penchant for telling crap, boorish jokes to wealthy drunks. He may decide that the money and the adulation, because apparently got a stand innovation, are too tempting. But there's still the risk that Johnson will enter the contest and he would have a very good chance of winning. The Tories are then in even worse position than they were when they booted him out. Arguably, still a better position than the one they're in now, but it's still an election losing position nonetheless. Even if Johnson doesn't want to stand, they still run the risk of another crazy. The ballot to members will, just as last time, inevitably be Rishi Sunak and one of the crazies. It's just not at all clear that the Daily Mail readers who voted for Trust last time will have rethought their life. Or oh, I do notice the Daily Mail have turned on it today. Paul Dacre's probably saw that he's not getting his peerage. But anyway, you know, the, <coughs> these members may be so outraged, 
but MPs seem to be keep giving them ballots until they pick Sunak. Out of spite, they'll just select the crazy option every time. So no, the idea of going to members again is far too risky. I'm quite sure that Tory MPs do not want to replace Liz Truss with someone that's decided by the members. So then second, so then there's talk of a plot now to get Mordaunt and Sunak as like a double act. So either Penny Mordaunt as Prime Minister and Sunak back as Chancellor, or Sunak as Prime Minister and Mordaunt as his Deputy and Foreign Secretary. The plan involves keeping as much of the party as possible happy. So those two people represented a decent number of Tory MPs in the leadership contest. Uh, but they don't want to allow a leadership contest to have a stage where the loons in the wider party have a say. So that basically means, and what they've talked about, is having the contest rigged so that, it's an unfortunate term, but so that the there's only going to be one person gets through. That's it. Raise the threshold. So in the last contest, you needed 20 MPs to get yourself into the contest. Now they're going to suggest putting the bar so high that only one person can get through. I'm not really sure how you rig that, mind you. But the main benefit, if they can do that, is that the Tory media don't choose the next leader. Because their judgment has not exactly been in the best interest of the party. Also means having a leadership combo that most MPs can support. The obvious drawback is that it will split the party. There are already voices both inside the Parliamentary Party as well as the right-wing media saying it would be an undemocratic outrage to exclude the members. Mostly the same people who said it would be undemocratic to let the public vote on the final terms of our exit from the EU. But they would do their best to cause trouble in two ways. First, they may be enough of them in Parliament to make votes difficult. A Sunak Mordaunt ticket may have more support amongst MPs than Trust does, but does it have enough support to get its legislation through the House? Second, the next party conference will be very sticky. If the polls haven't turned by then, um, if they have, they'll be fine. I mean, you know, if they've rescued the poll situation, they look like they can win the next election. Yeah, the members will be absolutely fine with it. I strongly suspect this is not going to be the case. So if they're still significantly behind Labour, then party members are not going to be impressed and they're unlikely to give the new cabinet a warm reception. So then the third option, the third option is just sod it all. Get rid of trust, get someone else in by whatever means necessary and then gamble on a quick general election. May not be as mad as it seems. I don't think it's going to happen, but it may not be that mad because there are MPs like Nadine Doris saying that if you go for a third prime minister, you're going to need an election. It's not true, of course. Don't pay too much attention to her. She's drunk most of the time, but it might confuse the public. Get a somewhat respectable leader appointed. Uh, steady the ship, steady the markets, but don't allow time for the economy to fester as it will, you know, it won't matter who they appoint next year, will it? Call a quick general election, hope that the public are confused enough to think the Tories are behaving decently again. Even if they lose, they might not lose too badly. Bear in mind the Tories are on for a proper spanking at the next election. A deep recession and two more winters of severe NHS crises are not going to improve their chances, even with a better leader. If Tories conclude that the next election is gone anyway, it's actually not a ridiculous step to think about when is the best time to trigger the election in order to limit the damage. And it might well be as soon as possible. New leader, sound a bit sensible, boost in the polls, election, cause trouble for possibly a small Labour majority with your sizeable opposition party, let Labour deal with the mess of the recession next year, public services, the SNP's proposed referendum, let them deal with all that nonsense. The alternative may be wait around two more years, then find yourself beaten into third place by the SNP. But then there's the fourth option, which is the Churchill option. It's not for Conservative Party members to choose our Prime Minister. They only choose the party leader. Well, what if the Tory MPs just club together to appoint a new prime minister, but not a new party leader? Truss could remain the Conservative Party leader. They don't have to issue a vote of confidence in her leadership. She can say, no, no, you're the party leader. That's, you go sit on the back bench as the party leader. But someone else would be prime minister. They would just need to demonstrate to the king that over 320 of them are backing a different candidate. And then he would appoint them all straightforward, all constitutional. It would require the vast majority of Tory MPs to back the move, however. They could afford maybe about 30 
of them to go against the plan. But if they could get the vast majority in favour of this Sonak Mordaunt ticket, that could work. It would take some negotiating, mind you, because that is the vast majority of Tory MPs getting behind the plan. I'm not sure the numbers would be there right now. But maybe if the MPs driving it said, look, it's either this or a general election which you want. Then maybe. Hard to say where MPs are concerned. They don't need to be clever or analytical to do their jobs. And so quite a lot of them are not. But this is what happened when Churchill took over from Chamberlain. Obviously, it wasn't as messy then. Chamberlain was quite happy to step down. But it was a simple switch with no voting process. It was accomplished by Churchill replacing Chamberlain as Prime Minister, but not at the time anyway, as Conservative Party leader. So those are what I think are the four basic options. Maybe in order of preference, maybe not for any Tories wanting stability. None of them are easy, of course. And none of them are good, even when they go according to plan. It may still look like a, a massive clown show to the public, but there's maybe no way of avoiding that if they keep trust in place. You know, it may irritate party members, but it may be a choice between that or letting them foist another loon on them that does them no favours in the election. And they may have to choose quickly because if the markets, it turns out the start of next week, have decided that trust is incapable of handling the economy and that's all there is to it, then, um, then the longer... They, they leave it, the harder it gets. The harder it hits the pockets of mortgage holders, renters, those looking ahead to retirement. They're voters, in other words. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for membership. Until next time, I'll see you later.